the word dupes as a positive thing in the art community, I think it needs to stop. And I feel like I'm going to get some unlove for that, but I really do. The word dupes has become a positive word uh, in a lot of conversations. Like, I found a dupe for this. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experience with dupes so you can better understand why I think it's a negative thing. And I hope by the end of this, I might convince you to kind of switch your thinking about dupes a little bit. Now, I promise you, I'm not just going to talk at you this whole time. I am going to paint. We're going to chat about it. We're going to bounce ideas off of one another. But the bottom line is, for me, a dupe is a copy. And a copy can be problematic. And you're probably wondering, like, Christy, don't you have a whole playlist uh, on your channel of how to steal like an artist? Indeed, I do. Indeed, I do. And here's the difference between a dupe and a copy. And a copy for me, just to set the stage, is, is, is a, a negative word right in this space right now. It's not always, though. I feel that a copy without innovation is a frustration point. It is problematic for our community. And here's why. Because a copy stealing part of someone's idea, I know that word is so charged, but without innovating, without taking that idea and making it different enough, putting your own spin on it, you're just robbing someone else's brain power, really. And so you might be wondering, like, why in the world are we talking about this? So I'm going to go ahead down to the painting table and show you something. But I promise soon uh, we are going to get to just painting and kind of conversating about this. So I designed a brush set, as many of you know, that looks an awful lot like this. Looks an awful lot like this. <laughs> it looks an awful lot like this. <laughs> I'm trying to find the really, the really upsetting one that looks an awful lot like this, right? Yeah, yeah. It's in all communities, absolutely. It's a problem in all communities. And I want to talk a little bit about also how this idea, this belief of mine intersects with some of the marketplaces that we are all experiencing and enjoying. And yes, I'm going to talk about AliExpress. I'm going to talk about Timo and all the others that kind of she in kind of come up in that conversation. And I think you'll actually be surprised at how I feel, especially about Timu. We're going to be talking about that more. Um, I think you might be surprised. I'm going to go to comments because I, I already, I, I see my comments thing just moving and grooving. So let's hit it. <clears throat> Dupes started being popular in makeup and fashion. Let's put this up. Um, and how people can get similar looks or benefits at a cheaper cost in order to make it more available for everyone. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. So true. And so maybe me saying dupes is a bad thing. It's a bad word. It's a, you know, I, I did say that. Maybe that's too strong. Maybe we just really need to understand the difference between giving someone a more affordable path in an honest way versus this. Right? Right? You know, you'd think that I would have also um, actually brought my paintbrush set out to show you, but no, I forgot to. So I'm going to go grab it. But I love that. Thank you, Sela, for um, reminding us of that fact. Dupes really is really, it, it, it started as a positive thing because let's be honest. Let's be honest. Not everyone has 32 and $35 to spend on a brush set, right? Absolutely. I make recommendations for folks that don't have that in their budget. But there is another way versus this. There is another way. And I'm actually, I've got a few, just a few strategies that you can use as a consumer out there shopping to actually shop more responsible. So we're going to talk about that too. You got to stick around. 
I think it's going to be good. And it actually means your shopping might take a little bit longer, but it's responsible shopping. But soon enough, soon enough. Getting back to comments. Um, Amy says, I came across this problem in the knitting community. Um, I was part of a group who would share patterns within the group. That's troublesome too, because again, those patterns, I don't know a lot about this genre, but I'm assuming those patterns were developed and designed by someone that is their like sweat equity. That is their, um, their brain power, right? And they were sold. Money was exchanged to one person for one person. So very interesting. Very interesting. Yes. Yes. All right. I'm going to keep going here. <laughs> yes. Jennifer, you're right. Knockoff, copycat, um, counterfeit maybe is a better way to describe what I've got here on the table. Absolutely. Yeah. Dupes or copies are how a lot of people learn. I love this. Yes, I feel like before you can change it, you must know the foundation of it. Absolutely. I love that. I love it. Oh, the Thrifty Apprentice. Hey, 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 hey. Um, so good to see you here. Thanks for joining. I love it. I love it. So yeah, so so maybe what we're seeing here is that dupes isn't really a bad word. Uh, but it's kind of being used sometimes in conversations. Let me tell you a story. Um, and as I do that, and I'm going to show you more of these, but I'm not here. Let me tell you what. I'm not here to be like, oh, someone's copying me. I'm not. It does suck. I'm not going to lie. It, it's creating a ton of confusion for people that literally think like my factory, my manufacturer is making me. They are not. But I'm not here to whine about it. I'm here to just kind of give my thoughts, educate, and paint. So I'm going to go ahead and use these today. Um, and we'll get back into the conversation. If you're having fun, if this is interesting, if this is like, oh, I think I might stick around because I don't know what's going to happen here. Go ahead and give it a boop. That's a thumbs up. That's a like, whatever you want to call it. I would appreciate it. I know. Shame on Amazon. Um, so a little backstory as I get into this. I always... I want to stop and say something. I was thinking this the other day. Um, you can always tell a, an artist's personality when they open up a used tin of any kind of colorful thing. Because if they're type A, it certainly doesn't look like this. Anyway, completely unnecessary aside, but I was thinking about it the other day. And I'm like, man, yeah, <laughs> I am not type A. <laughs> Um, so I'll tell you a story. When I first started discovering these dupes, um, copycats, whatever you want to call it, um, of course I was looking to see, okay, how do I report them? How do I get these taken down from the platform? And are there reviews? And one of the reviews that I saw is what really um, brought me to this live today eventually. And the review was, and I paraphrase, uh, I thought these would be a great dupe for Christy Rice's brushes. And I received them and they are horrible quality. That was the review, something like that. And it, it just didn't sit right in my soul. I felt like that person didn't quite understand the impact. Guarantee it was innocent, the impact of what they had done. and. Um, and maybe that's a little too harsh, but that's where the word dupe really is so problematic because what she bought into wasn't a dupe. It wasn't an option, wasn't an option, a more affordable option for probably my dagger brush, which most people are, that's what they want to get their hands on first if they're interested in my brushes. It wasn't a, a way to learn with a more affordable product. It was literally an obvious copy of my product sold at a fraction of the cost, right? And so they bought into that. And I was like, gosh, we really need to educate somebody. I don't know if it's me, but we need to all educate ourselves and be better understanding of what we're being shown in the marketplace and how we can sift through it. I think you're going to be surprised when you hear me say this. You don't have to not 
shop at these places. You don't have to avoid Timu. I purchased on Timu two days ago, watercolor paper from the brand, from an actual brand store on Timu. But there are certain things I will never buy on Timu. I'm going to talk about more of that later. Um, let's get to comments and see what's going on here. Let's call it what it is. They ripped off the artist and their creation. Yeah, yeah. And that is, we cannot call it, when that happens, what you just described, you can't call it a dupe. It's not a dupe. It's not a dupe. It's not, it's not an educating, you know, um, less, uh, less of, you know, excuse me, more affordable option, more affordable path. It's a ripoff, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I think someone here is saying they bought the knockoff to compare and it was garbage. I let Amazon know exactly what I thought. Yeah. Um, I saw those on Amazon, says Kimberly, and I was sure they were fakes because of the cheap price. I'm sure they don't have the quality yet. Um, yeah. Super, super, just the whole thing is a bummer. Um, yeah, absolutely. So Sayla says, um, what's happening mostly in China? Um, and that is what I'm seeing as well, um, is cloning and imitating without it being accidental. Um, without it being different in any way at all. That is correct. So there are tools and this is, you need to know this as a consumer, you need to know this. There are tools that sellers like myself and those being mentioned in this comment can use to kind of as an x-ray to what is being sold, how often, for how much on Amazon and Walmart. There are very, very robust tools out there and so what's being described here is exactly correct. Folks are using these tools. They are seeing what is selling well, whatever their metric is for that. And they're like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to produce 50,000 of these. I'm using that. It's an arbitrary number, but it is a very large number so that they can, number one, they're going to produce it with less quality usually. And in this case, with the items that I have shown you so far, that is absolutely the case. And then they're going to produce it at such a high volume that they can completely, like, bare bones undercut this good selling item. This is done intentionally in, in this kind of context that I'm talking about today. So as a consumer, what can you do? What can you do? How can you spot the differences? Because I get questions every day, friends. Um, I am getting questions every day. Well, how do I know? So one of the things that you want to be sure of is that you understand on Amazon brands. So yes, we are talking about Amazon specifically right now, but this is not just a problem on Amazon. On Amazon, you have brands. You want to look at the brand name. So you have the listing, right? In the upper left-hand corner above the listing title, it's going to be a link with a brand name. If that brand doesn't say the brand name that you think you're buying, just exit, leave, get out of there. There's something not right, okay? That is one huge, huge way to spot a potentially problematic item. So, all right. So let, this is a heavy topic. This is a heavy topic. So let's just, let's do a little painting. Um, I love the comments though. I love the conversation. Um, someone just mentioned, you're not alone in being duped. Fountain pens, a disaster. Um, yeah, duped fountain pens never is good. Um, I'm also seeing it a lot with, you know, uh, bags, like purses that have patterns on them. I'm seeing... Um, very specific kind of format of bags and different things being being duped. Um, uh, camera bags for professional photographers. There's a real problem there as well. Um, so yeah, I'm just doing a landscape kind of just from my experiential brain, right? Ooh, that water's dirty. <laughs> it's all good. Just going to have some fun with it. It's for sure going to be abstract. So we're just going to be, you know, we're going to be okay with it. I'm going to go there. 
going to be here for it. Oh, we need to go to the other side of my paint container, but I, you know, Hey, I just did that video on starting sloppy. So, you know, gotta, gotta follow my own rules. Gotta be willing to take the heat under my own rules, right? I am doing this on cold press, so I'm going to get a lot of texture, a lot, a lot. Thinking about my atmospheric perspective here, letting things that I want to kind of go into the distance be a little more blue and purple and all that kind of fun. I think we need to not be afraid of texture in watercolor. Can we stop being afraid of texture in watercolor? Um, and I get it. I know why. I know why we sometimes feel like if we've got texture showing through that it's, you know, that we did something wrong because it's watercolor and it's all about these washes and yada, 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 right? But let's let's not sit there. Um, the, Nicole says, I think the huge dupe thing started with purses and such. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, completely duplicating is absolutely the problem. But here's the thing. These places can make a lot of money in a short amount of time before they're caught and they know it. They know it. So Brock says, I recently discovered something you might be interested in. Jackson's Art sells me a color crayon holders, which helps prevent them from breaking during use. Oh, thank you, Brock. That's so cool. I love that. I love that. They got duped. I saw that comp. That was awesome. Um, yeah. And now it's more costly. And I don't know. I mean, because you can, as an Amazon seller, you can, you can put the option of no returns. So I don't, you know, some of these companies, I don't know if they're doing that, but they could be. They could be making it so folks cannot even return them. Um, again, I don't know if the companies that I'm talking about or have showed thus far or will show later in this video or that I may talk about in the future are actually doing that. But that is an option that could really make it problematic for someone who who fell into that trap. Yes. Yes. And here, here's the thing, too. I want to make it crystal, crystal clear. I understand that the budget just may not currently or ever stretch to bring these into your life. But that just because something out there is more expensive, costs more, does not mean there's not there's not morality assigned to that. Right? I mean you can assign it, but we we need to be careful of that, right? It doesn't mean like, oh, just because there's something out there that looks very similar and has the same stuff written on it, right? That, well, you know what, that this should never have been what it cost anyway. So I'm not going to feel bad about purchasing this. That's, in my humble opinion, that's not how it works, you know? So just to show you here, here's the dupe. It's just paper. This is the one I'm really um, focusing on right now to get taken down. Um, because they copy everything about like the, the names, they try to copy the colors, they, um, all the handles are loose. And look, look, I've had, you know, issues with some of my inventory here and there with loose handles, <laughs> you know, it happens, but when they all come in loose, um, it's really problematic. The bristles are not, uh, they, they just, they feel like plastic. Um, they just don't, I don't understand what they're doing here. Well, I do understand. I pulled that apart with like no, no effort. This one didn't come apart. That's good. Good for them. Um, <laughs> so anywho, just, just a little thought on that. You know, this, this isn't, don't make this about, um, being offended by pricing of a better quality item. Yeah. I see that all, I see that across so many different, um, different, genres you know not just in art you know um gosh that is so expensive that is so expensive it's like um it's 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 a way to almost devalue you know effort sometimes which is is troublesome definitely i saw it um i still see it in the wedding in the wedding industry and you know weddings are a tough thing weddings are controversial um, because they do, they can, you know, secure a higher price point for items because, you know, it's presumed to be a once in a lifetime type of situation. And so, but I see it so often 
that that is just so expensive. It's one day, da, 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 but it's one day and it's someone's, you know, blood and sweat and tears, sweat equity over, you know, let's say you hire a planner over, you know, nine months, 12 months, who knows, two years. Um, and, you know, there's just so much that goes into products and services and everything. So anywho, I'm, I am fully and solidly on my soapbox. How are we feeling? Is everybody okay with this? Just ordered your legitimate brush and palette from Amazon. Always have wanted these. Very excited to get them finally. I did follow your guidelines early on and got cheaper stuff that was good. Awesome. Yes, absolutely. Hobbies are expensive. Yes, Liz. Um, and there, there's always going to be um, more affordable options to start with. And that is a good thing. That is a good thing. I am just making, so I've just been like scrubbing in the the neo color and then also kind of adding um some moisture on top and building and then i did bring in you saw a little bit from my palette a little bit more here and i'm loving that combination and um i'm just kind of now thinking about getting into the middle ground and also the four i love deciding in a landscape what is going to be where my eye is going to rest and maybe that is that it's not maybe i think that is very different from where your eye is going to go first um where is your eye going to land where where is it going to rest and kind of hang out and notice more things right and so i loved figuring that out where do i want that to be in any given landscape you know and sometimes it's not at the horizon line for me Sometimes it's not, and I find that so um, fascinating to work through. And sometimes that evolves with a landscape painting as well. You start thinking one thing, um, but then as you navigate and you add details and you uh, push through tough moments that turn into aha moments, oh my gosh, it's so incredibly um, shocking sometimes where your eye lands so now i see that unwrap that expensive paper use it don't be afraid of it now i may be taking that conversation out of context but oh my gosh this is so true i love there's so many side conversations going on sketches and scrubs says some things that have helped me get past that i'm not good enough honestly was learning that watercolor paper sizing can go bad and that watercolor paper sizing also i'm going to add to this incredible thought watercolor paper sizing can be incredibly depending on the brand um, can be incredibly inconsistent and can cause all nature of all manner of crazy unexpectedness go on on your page. Uh, I'll tell you a story about that. Um, I bought watercolor paper from Timu uh, Academy and actually I bought some more the other day. And when I started working through the, um, when I started working through the blocks, I was noticing just strange things happening. Um, and, you know, when it really came down to it, the strange things weren't so strange that I obviously wouldn't buy again. Um, just using the cat's tongue brush here, friends, and this is damp. And then my brush is dr pretty dry. It's got color on it, but it's pretty dry. And I'm just kind of scrubbing and tapping and tapping. It's very subtle what's happening here. Not so subtle there, but tapping and scrubbing and wiggling. And you're getting this really cool kind of effect in the foreground here. Now I've got things going on here that are, make it very clear that I have not decided what is my focal point because my eye is like, where do I go? Where do I go? Ooh, where do I stop? Your eye is definitely confused right now, but that's okay. This is the muddy middle. This is the ugly middle. It's okay. It's okay. Um, so yes, understanding sizing and understanding that like the stuff I bought from Timu that it can you know, it was probably seconds and, you know, being aware of that. And like, so when something funky happens on your page, you're not like, oh my gosh, I'm a failure. Right? Right. We're there for it. We, we are there for each other. We're going to cheer each other through crazy stuff like that. All right. We got some weirdness happening back here. Maybe I should have done this on some New York Central. This pa this paper starting was like a hot mess and um, smudges from past paintings and all that kind of fun stuff, but it's okay. 
it's okay. I have some gold, I think, gouache on here, but it's okay. It's all right. Who knows what where it's going to lead me? Who knows? Maybe I'll add some gold when this is all said and done. Totally hearing you, Jennifer says, and want more of this, Christy. The better informed we are, the better protected we are. Oh, gosh. I couldn't have said it better myself. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, uh, yes. Um, okay. Just looking through comments here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. My act my eye actually goes to right to the middle. Okay, cool. Anyone else? Curious, curious, curious. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, yeah. The New York Central paper I have found, um, the, even their cold press is um something I really enjoy. I did a whole video about it. Um, well, I discovered it during a video. Um about how it just it, it's become because I really don't like hot press even if I'm trying to use watercolor pencils or these you know neo colors I just hot press is we just don't get along and so I found to uh, I found the New York Central to be a really nice acceptable textured surface for for some of those mediums so I'm excited about it <clears throat> yes friends Meaden and um, an academy same same company we discovered that in an earlier video last year um really good stuff really good stuff y'all know i'm a big fan lover of academy paper that's what i'm using today that's what i'm using today and i prefer academy over bao Hung. i just feel like academy acts more like arches sorry sorry charlie that's my experience. Lucky gate key. I'm glad hot press is your jam. It was made for, it was made for somebody. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Can I just say how nice it is to see one YouTuber learning from another here? Yes. Yes. We all have things to learn. I say that often. At least I try to. Um, we all have things to learn from one another. It's one of the reasons I started doing, bringing on other artists. I am going to do a little plug again for my painting session with Jillian Boone. Oh my gosh. I was like starting to tear up just um, listening to kind of the, the end, the wrap up after we painted together, she taught me how to do her roses. And um, I literally felt like what she taught me um, changed the way I will paint forever. I'm not like going to copy her, but she opened my eyes and the connection that my my heart and my brain and my hand have in ways that I couldn't have imagined. So what I'm doing here, I'm taking this liner brush, friends, and I'm scrubbing. There, my art teacher used to call this scumbling, I think. Scrumbling? Oh gosh, I can't remember. Something like that. And you look what you can this just look at beautiful happy accidents from that. You I kind of created, you know. This little, um, this little bump that really looks like, you know, undulations in the land and the geography. Just, 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 mwah. I'm, I'm happy with, you know, letting my liner brush kind of do what it wanted there. Just giving it a little bit of direction and then getting out and seeing what happened. Look at that. So it's like a horizontal scrub. I've probably got, I don't know. It, I don't, it's not a dry brush. There's definitely moisture on it. I mean, there's always moisture on a, on a dry brush technique, but maybe, hopefully you know what I mean. But just enough to get some marks down and move it around. Look at some of the lovely that is happening there. Scumbling, yeah, word used in decorative painting techniques in the 80s and 90s, yeah, scumbling. That, I think you're right, yeah. But yes, yeah, scumbling, scumbling, it's just a really powerful technique, absolutely. So conversations happening here i have to try academy I haven't purchased it before yep brock it's wonderful um you can get it on timu um you can definitely get it there and um just know that you know there might be so, a little bit of sizing weirdness here and there but honestly i was surprised by it at first i was like oh gosh what's happening Rrr, you know and kind of annoyed and, but at that time, I was also super annoyed with Timu in general. And, <laughs> um, but then once I dug into probably six or seven um, different um, blocks, I noticed that it really wasn't, it wasn't causing stumbling blocks for me. So I was happy with that.
Look at that. And look how long it stays wet. You see that? It's still damp up here. Just great. Just great. I'm just stroking upwards with a really juicy kind of syrupy uh, mix of brown and the blue from my Art for Joy Sake palette. It's a combo I use all the time. And using that liner brush, and I'm stroking up and up and up and just seeing what kind of cool effects I can get, right? All right. Bao Hong is professional version. Yeah, I know. I just don't think it's any better. And I actually, I much prefer the way that Academy handles. And it's cheaper, so why not? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my nails. Yeah, my Disney nails. You know. Reminder of my crazy Disney trip where a girlfriend lands in the hospital. <laughs> Life is weird. All right, I'm putting just a little bit of that intense color. I added that blue and brown mixture, and then I just had a little bit of this olive green up here to it. And I, I, I wanted to just add a few moments, so like one, two, three moments, little little se sections of it to see how I felt about it. And I'm okay with it. And I actually think it's leading the eye back here a little more. So. We'll see where that takes us. Okay, I feel like painting a sky. And as I paint the sky, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about my thoughts on Timu. All right, talk to you about my thoughts on Timu and how you can potentially shop there pretty responsibly, all right? I am adding water. I'm not saying it's perfectly clean water because it's not. This is one of my favorite ways to do skies. All right. Getting that water in there and trying to not get it overlapping with my mountains. All right. But if it does, it's also not the end of the world. All right. And then we're gonna start tapping in some color you have to decide, do you want a sky that just feels like a sky that's going to fade, not, not be a focal point, or do you potentially want a sky that's going to have some focal point? And I'm feeling a little focal pointy-ish right here. So I'm just going to tap, tap, tap using the, it's just paper, the three quarter inch dagger curve side down. And I've got the point kind of facing to my left. So it's horizontal essentially to comparing to my paper. All right. Do a little bit of that. I'm going to do a little bit of peach. I'm really going to try to make sure my brush is clean here. And I'm going to dab a little bit into it. Oh, that's a little intense. Just with the point of my brush. And I'm going to take some care not to let it mingle too much with the blue or else you can imagine it's going to be like a weird greeny color. It's going to turn a little green. So, so. and then we're going to do some paper towel action. See what happens, okay? We're gonna squish it and we're gonna blot. Oh yeah. Now my blue is pretty staining, all right? So it does kind of sit pretty quickly where you put it, right? So kind of like that. It almost looks like I'm creating some god light or something. That was a happy accident, y'all. That was a happy accident. I'm going to grab a little bit of this yellow from my Neo color here. And it was a little too much yellow. I'm going to tap it in again. Don't get it too much into that blue or you will definitely have a green sky. And a little bit of pink from my palette. I'm going to tap it up. Now you can let the yellow and the pink blend, obviously. and I'm blending up clean water. But once I start pulling some of that blue or purple from the horizon, I'm rinsing my brush and getting out of there. I don't want that to get muddy and weird, All right? Rinse, it's getting muddy and weird. All right, I'm gonna stop touching it for right now because I'm also starting to push some of that yellow I put up in there up into the blue, which we don't want, as I mentioned. A little bit of pink, a little bit more pink there. Because again, I'm liking this like, my eyes entering down here, and then it's gone, hey, oh, ah. Oh. <laughs> right? That's exactly what it's doing. 
right? Right. Clean water, just tapping a few more moments in there, get it to blendy blend, and then a little bit of that. And then maybe, I don't know, I might regret this, a little more intense blue here. Probably wasn't the right brush for the job, but I was being cute, thought it might work. I know I said I was going to talk about Timo, and I haven't talked about Timo. So I'm defining kind of this, what I've created here, right? I'm defining that a little bit more. Do I want it to be godlightish? And I could kind of do some of this, right? If I wanted to get a kind of a godlight thing going on. Sure. I'm getting really dramatic with my sky today. My sky is getting crazy. I don't like that one. So I'm going to try to, this is a tricky spot here because I've got a lot of colors intersecting and I did something I didn't like. So I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to get out of the sky because I'm actually somewhat happy with it right now. So I'm going to get out of the sky. Get out of there. AliExpress has some Paul Rubin watercolor sets, some pastels. Yep. I love, Paul Rubin is a great brand. I love their watercolor paper if you can get your hands on it. My eye goes straight to the mountain and up to the sky. Cool. I'll take that. I'll take that. Um, do I want to try to cover up this weirdness? Yeah, let's, let's, let's do a little something, something there. A few little taps. I knew it was still wet and I would definitely say it's wet. It wasn't damp. It was wet. And then maybe a little scumbling. I'm going to be using that word now all the time, all the time. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you. Thank you, Virginia. I have not done Godlight in a long time, but I felt I was feeling feeling my life today, feeling the mojo for it. So here's the thing, friends. Am I against Timu? No. At one time, uh, I had you know some different. My thoughts have evolved. Let's just say that my thoughts on Timu have definitely evolved. And here's where I'm at. And yes, I only have one earbud in. Don't ask. Here's where I'm at with Timo. I've come up with some tricks and there's really just one, actually, I should just say one main trick, maybe two with Timo. Because let's face it, whatever your feelings are about Timo and similar platforms, they are a good way for those whose budgets aren't stretching as far to get into different hobbies, different joy chasing type hobbies like watercolor. All right. And I don't want to, I don't want to poo poo how powerful that is. Right. So here's what you can do on Timo. Number one, if you're looking to purchase something and it has a pattern, geometric, especially floral, if it has any type of artwork, go ahead and do one of those Google lens searches. And I know you're like, Christy, I'm out. I don't got time for this. I don't got time, <laughs> but trust me, look at what you're going to buy. And you're probably like, seriously, like a $2 item and I've got to do this. I'm not saying you have to do it, but it's a more responsible way to shop on platforms like this. Okay. If it has a pattern, I want you to go and do a Google lens search and just see if anything looks glaring. All right. Especially with artwork, floral right? Um, things that are just, it's easier for it to be super obvious, right? Harder with geometric, but it's just a way, just an extra layer of responsible shopping. Like a lot of us look for vegan materials, right? A lot of us look for made in the USA. A lot of us look for, you see where I'm going here? So it's just another way to be a responsible shopper. That's how I want you to understand it. All right. Um, I'd rather go without something I can't afford than sell my soul for a purchase from an unethical company. I get that. I get that. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I, I do see some value there. And, and I, I think for me, and understand I'm still working through my thoughts on this. And who knows, maybe I always will be. But for me, I'd rather someone um, shop responsibly on a site like that and find the joy of watercolor than not. That's, I think, that's where I'm at today. 
I need, okay, we'll get to that. Absolutely. Um, yes. Yes. So, um, the other thing that you can do on Timu, um, and perhaps some of the other sites, but let's face it, I'm talking about Timu. Um, we've already talked about how to shop responsibly and safely on Amazon. Just look for that brand. You know, if you're shopping for a specific brand, look for that brand. But on Amazon, you can also do Google Lens searches. You can take a screenshot, get it on your on your phone, and do just Google Google Lens and and upload that screenshot. And it's gonna it's gonna show you stuff. All right. So you can do that also on Amazon, but look at that brand name right above the listing title. You know, Amazon listing titles are long string, sometimes doesn't make sense, right? Upper left. You're gonna see a hyperlink. Look at the brand name. That's how you're gonna know, okay? So other thing on Timu is to look for brand stores. Meaden is on there with a brand store. I don't know if that's exactly what they call it, brand store. Um, Academy, ba Baohong is on there. Look for brand stores, all right? That's just another way to shop responsibly. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. Oh, I love this. I used to treat my watercolors like oils only did landscapes, got burned out and quit. A few months ago, I started painting again, having so much fun. Yay, Michelle. Mm, 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 mm. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, thank you, Tammy. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right. There's so many fun conversations going on in this comment section. Oh, no, you're not getting your notifications, Darlene. I'm sorry. Just check that little bell thing. If you're subscribed, that you won't see a subscribe button. You'll see a little bell with a drop down. I think just make sure you've got that turned on. Um, interesting using. Okay. Yeah, I see Jennifer. That's super interesting. Mindful shopping for 2024 is my New Year's Eve resolution. See, I think that's, that's fantastic. We could all do that, right? <laughs> Thank you. My mouse is, look at this. Look at this. Like there's opera rose on the end of my mouse. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Google Lens. Yeah. Am I am I saying that correct? It's Google Lens, I think. And it's basically like searching. It's like you put in an image and it's searching similar looking things. And it's going to give you an image search, uh, like an image uh, search result. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Am I Am I saying that right? I hope I am. Google Lens on an Android phone, not sure, not sure. Oh, Nancy, you also have to permit notifications on your phone, okay, on your device, if you're not getting notifications for the lives. Okay, so I just wanna review, and actually friends, and you, this, this part will be a little clunky. <laughs> All right, so here's what I'm gonna do, friends, because I really wanna show you what I'm talking about. I really wanna show you what I'm talking about, I'm describing how to shop responsibly so you can avoid these dupes, so you can avoid copycats, scammers, whatever you want to call them, all right? All right, friends, here is Amazon, okay? And I was actually wrong. It's, that's weird on different, it may depend on your screen resolution, but see here, visit the Paint Crush store. You know you're in the right spot, all right? Another big indicator and now this isn't something that sellers can, you know, control on any given day. But right now, my free from fear brush set has Amazon's choice. All right. It's very unlikely that for any length of time or at all that these, these kind of pop, I call them pop-up sellers or pop-up brands that I talked about before where they see an opportunity using the tools where they can kind of look behind the scenes of what people are selling on Amazon, Right. That's who we're talking about. Very rare are they gonna get Amazon's choice because they're usually not up long enough to get it, all right? So it's probably gonna depend on your screen resolution. Hopefully, yeah, you guys can see this. Um, so you're gonna see that hyperlinked brand name. Now I have a store, so it'll actually say visit my store, right? But it'll otherwise it'll still be a hyperlink even if that pop-up brand doesn't have a store It'll be a hyperlink and it will just not say paint crush or it will not say the brand that you thought you were buying from. Okay. 
that's a big, big, big indicator. So that was one of the things I wanted to show you. Friends, if you're watching on replay, I hope you're enjoying this. And if you are part of Team Replay, would you go ahead, get in the comments and say, boo copycats. And let us know you're here, get involved in the conversation. I stand behind absolutely loving my comment section. That's why I talk about it so much. It is a huge resource of information beyond whatever craziness comes out of my mouth, okay? Way beyond. All right, so get in there, get in there. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna stop the share. All right, so that was one thing I wanted to show you. I'm also gonna try to bring up Timu and show you what I mean by like a brand store, okay? All right, here's the share. Okay, here's a look at Meaden on Timu, okay? And a couple of things that are I'm keying into. Um, something to watch out for. Look, it's provided by 8.6, what does it say? Provided by Timu, 8.6K sold. That's a pretty good sign. A lot, are, a lot have been sold, 500 of this specific one. Because remember, it's not just other people on Timu are going to be carrying meat in Academy, et cetera, et cetera. It's got good reviews, okay? It's got probably a lot of reviews is my guess. We can look into that. 870 reviews, also a good sign. If you go to my brush dupes, and I can show you this. My brush dupes, my brush copycats, they have like two reviews. They've been up for months, two reviews, okay? And as an example, all right? Highlight, look at this. Another thing, direct from Meaden look for that. I am not saying this is a guarantee of safe shopping. This is a guarantee at all. I'm not saying that, but there are things, it's like layers of protecting yourself, layers of responsible shopping. You can be that much more sure, hopefully, right? All right, here we go. Down here, you see underneath the image on the left, meet in art. Let's click on that. It's a hyperlink. All right. Okay. This provider, all right. They. It doesn't look like they have a store set up. All right, but it looks like they have started one. So another decent sign, okay? So just some things to look for, all right? I'm gonna show you something else on Meet-In that struck me and uh, on Meet-In. Hi, I'm gonna show you something else on Timu. Um, I think it's gonna come up mini watercolor. It comes up a lot of different ways, tins. All right, here we go. I've seen folks bringing these up all over the place with different halls, different art supply halls. These are the type of things I want you to be careful of. I, if you see patterns like this on an item, I know it's only two bucks. I know it's only two bucks. And you're like, what does it matter? Who's it really hurting? They've sold 33,000 of them. I am not saying this one is a copy. I have not, this is not something I'm claiming is a copy of mine but it is very specific artwork with a lot of personality. Do a Google Lens search, do it, okay? Before you buy this, please do it. I'm urging you on this one. There was one, in spe uh, one specifically that I found that was a copy of one of my artworks. Um, and perhaps it's been taken down. They are being sold by so many different sellers producing these, these little tiny like Altoid tin. And don't get, get me, don't get me wrong, they are, here it is, they are cute as all get out, friends, okay? So this is a copy. This is a copy of my artwork that they added a bird to. If you do a Google image search, most likely you're going to see some of my artwork pop up. Um, Google Lens search, some of my artwork pop up that has been licensed to um, Overstock, that's been licensed to Bed Bath & or not Bed Bath & well, it was at one time. It's been licensed in a bunch of different spots, and you're going to see startling similarities. So please do those Google Lens searches, okay? Let me see if I can actually do one here. And it might not work. I've seen it, I've actually seen it work in other places. Oh, good heavens, this isn't working. Which is a good photo. This is a nice one, top down. We're gonna see, it's giving me a hard time taking screenshots. Isn't that interesting, all right? screenshot and boom ba -da -doom, boom boom and I'm gonna have to switch I'm doing the Google lens search I hope you're having fun friends I hope this isn't boring I feel like this is um 
this feels like we're in school, but I think it's important. I think it's so important. I'm seeing, I think it's so, so important. Okay. So I'm going to switch over and I'm going to share a different screen with you. But first, I'm going to check comments, see how we're feeling about things. <laughs> you had me at Opera Rose at the end of your mouse. Yeah. Oh, there are such good conversations. I don't know my style yet. Such good. Reverse image search, Sarah says. Okay, that's another thing um, that we can call it. Jennifer says, copy your pick into the search bar on an Android. Perfect. Yes, Google Lens. Carla's confirming. Thank you, Carla. Thank you. Thank you. Kimberly says, I'm here for it. Well, awesome. Okay. I'm going to share my screen again and I'm going to show, I'm going to see if it comes up. I'm going to see I've had it come up before, but who knows? They may have um, gotten on to their, you know, they may have realized what they did and who knows. Okay. Oh, it doesn't have a desktop version. Of course it doesn't. Of course it doesn't. Um, go, oh, maybe it does. Go to Google Lens. Mm, app store google play yeah it's just on the phone okay so i can't do it on the phone right now. anywho um yeah so this was uh this was something that i found of mine now here's the thing like was i concerned enough about that like blue rosy pattern um i wasn't i'm more concerned about my brushes so i'm focusing my attention there and that's the sad thing about this and i'm going to keep painting and talk about this that's the sad thing about this um, and it, maybe this is my attempt not to make you feel bad. Please know that I'm not trying to make you feel bad, but to maybe urge you just in another way to just shop a tiny bit more responsibly. Do one more thing, one extra step. You don't have to do five, 10 extra steps. Like, cause I talked about a variety of steps, but maybe I'll encourage you just to do one or two, right? Cause there's, there's some sadness to this. And the sadness is, is that some of these companies, they know, they know what they're doing. They've done it often they know what they're doing and they know how to evade right right now um it has gotten to the point where the handful of companies that i've been reporting on amazon amazon no longer taking them down because the pop-up brands know that all they have to do is say we are required we in good faith they send a letter back to me it says we in good faith believe that you are mistaken <laughs> that's what they say and that this claim was made in error. And until we see that you are filing an official lawsuit against our company, we're not taking it down. And Amazon agrees with them. And that is where I'm at. That is where we at. And that is, that is where we at. That's where we're at. And that's the sad thing of it. So now brands like me have to decide, am I going to continue this? Am I going to spend money and additional time to go to a lawyer and get the letter and you know that kind of thing and i am making the decision at this point to yes i am doing that but there are a lot of brands who simply cannot or will not um and let's face it it's most likely for budget purposes right it's costly and that is the sad that is the sad ending to a lot of this it is too hard and too expensive to chase and that that bums me out. What doesn't bum me out is this lovely happy accident of a like alleyway that is making itself known here in my painting. And I'm just, I am going with it. It's just interesting. Um, but I'm not going to go too crazy because it's going to mess with focal points. But anywho. No, don't pay for a lawyer, please. <laughs> it is sad. Um, what's the point of copyright laws then? Um, uh, it, it's it's tricky. It's tricky. Here's the thing with paying a lawyer. I think this next step that I'm taking, and this is going to answer the copyright laws thing too. Um, I Do I have a copyright in every piece of artwork that I've ever done? No, I don't. Our copyright laws changed about... Um, well, they changed at some point. I don't know how long ago it was. It might've been like five or 10 years ago. And they've made it a little more difficult. You used to be able to file a whole grouping of artwork and, um, and I did, I, and now you have to file individually or in smaller groups and not exactly sure. Um, it, it's, I just feel like it's always changing and it's so complicated, but they've made it a little more difficult for, for artists. Um, this particular situation is even more complicated because it's it's a it's a functional item 
you know, and I actually did file for, I am adding some kind of slightly curved darker strokes here to almost make it look like wind blown grasses, but I'm only going to do it right to this point because I want to keep it maybe a little bit further because I really want to have it aid the, the, yeah, that was too much. Have it aid kind of the, the focal point staying where it's at. Yeah, that was good. I should have left it as it was. Um, so, so this next step that I'm taking is I think going to be effective. I'm, I'm basically going to have a lawyer letter written up as my lawyer calls it. And it's going to, you know, basically be a scary letter that says, look, um, you know, this artist has copyrights. <laughs> Um, I'm I'm working through the process of copywriting this functional item and, you know, hopefully the way he can word it will be enough. Um, and uh, hopefully that letter will be enough for Amazon to be like, OK, this is serious and we're going to take it down. So that is my hope. Yes, copyright laws are so difficult and tedious. Like I filed the copyright for my brush set. Um, I don't know, four or five months ago, and they, I'm still getting emails and they're asking me questions like, wait, what is this? What are these items? How do they function? Like, why do they need a copyright? And like showing them pictures of the of the dupes and how like this whole thing needs to be considered a composition, essentially. Like I've been trying to like draw metaphors for them and oh, good Lord. Um, Thrifty Apprentice had a really good point. I want to bring it up here. The whole point is that they know most small businesses do not have the capital to sue them. Therefore, they play in the faces of those with the original idea. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is the point. I'm going to tell you another story. Um, the brand Gravy. Uh, I've been very vocal about this. Um, Gravy uh, has a marketing image. They have a palette that they have essentially... Um, I have made this claim and I will make it again. They have a palette that came out long after mine um, that tries to copy this color selection. Um, I actually bought the palette. I have it. And they have a marketing image that they use that is very similar to mine. Their palette is half the cost of mine. And uh, it's, it's really troublesome. It's really troublesome to me. Um, and I have spoken to them about it. I have emailed them. They have responded and uh, they have recognized that they are using an image that's very similar to my marketing image. And they basically, they know what they're doing. They said, this is a common format. You have no proof. Um, and sayonara. Um, and the other thing that Gravy did in the beginning is that they were also copying almost word for word the way I described my paints. Um, basically, my the, the features and benefits in my listing on Amazon, they were copying it word for word. And they recognized that and they blamed it on AI and they did change it, but they refused to take down that marketing image of their floral palette. So brands know what they're doing. Gravy, Gravy has got deep pockets, that is my guess. I mean, Gravy is selling all over TikTok, they know what they're doing and they know they can play in the faces of the smaller players. You got that exactly right. Yeah. But friends, really what it's about today is just maybe just bringing some to light some things that maybe you never thought of. Um, maybe you think it's hogwash and you're moving on and that is okay. That is okay. All right. I wish I hadn't done that. You ever do that? You put something down and you're like, good. Heavens to Betsy, I wish I hadn't done that. I really wish I hadn't done that either. But you know what? This is a good learning moment. Get out of there. It's ugly right now. I'm ticked off. I'm upset about it. I'm going to back away. Don't continue to zhuzh it, okay? Really important lesson to learn. <laughs> All right, friends, any questions? Any questions you'd like to ask me? I'm going to, I'm, I'm taking some time here to absorb. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with my landscape. Um, I, I, I'm in a stage right now where I'm painting with more muted colors and I'm enjoying that. And um, this one is, is showing some restraint still in that area. So I'm proud of myself. And so friends, what I just did right there is an example of being kind to yourself. All right. So be kind to yourself as you're painting. Get in the habit of picking out. Sure. Be critical. Find things that you don't like. That's easy. You all know that's easy. Come on. 
Say easy in the comments if you know that's easy. Come on. That's easy to be critical of yourself. I want you to learn how to be kind to yourself. And yes, today it's diet sun kissed. It's always easy to be critical of yourself. I see easy in the comments. I see so many easies. Yes. I want you to learn. I want it to become easier for you to be kind to yourself. All right. That's what I'm doing right now. I already know what I did wrong. You don't need to be a dead horse. Is that not a good one to say? I say I use colloquialisms a lot. And sometimes I've said ones that are not, not good to use anymore. And you all have told me about it. So I'm very aware of that. Okay. I try, friends. I try. <laughs> so learn to be kind to yourself. I have a video all about it. It's in one of my playlists about joyful watercolor beginnings. Go watch it. It's lovely. It's a great habit to build. Okay. Very easy. Very easy. Yes. Easy. Yes. Yeah. And my favorite Christism, break the rules. You betcha. You betcha. Oh, I love this. Amy says, I'm going to put this up. Uh, always find something that I don't like. Yeah. And then later I go back and I'm like, it's not that bad. And here's why. This is my thoughts on why. This is my experience. It's because you get that tunnel vision. And when once you create that moment that just sticking out like a sore thumb that you've been hyper-focusing on for however long, and you're like, oh, crap, that's all you see. That's all your mind can see. That's all. That's That's just where your eyes are at right? But you step away, walk away, turn it over as long as it's dry. Come back an hour later, come back a day later, sometimes even come back 10 minutes later and your eyes are fresher. Your eyes have like reset. There's got to be science behind that. Somebody, somebody find it out and come tell me, okay? So true. Also, as the paint dries, things, things change. Don't, don't forget that things change. All right, I'm getting excited. I'm having fun here. I feel, you know, we've we've been sharing heavy information, but important information and hopefully really useful information. But we've also been painting. This is fun. Who's gonna paint along? Anybody gonna rewatch, fast forward through all the heaviness, rewatch and paint with me? Say paint. Say paint. Paint. Thank you, Darlene. Easy peasy sigh, Ella. I know. I, I feel that sigh in my soul. I do. Um, Cajun Hawk says, Cajun Hawk. I love some of these screen names and I always call out ones that just are good. That's good. Love it. Um, I always step away when I'm getting frustrated and I always end up really liking what I've done when I return to it. That is being kind to yourself. Yes. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I'll paint. Didn't catch the beginning. Awesome. Jennifer, I always rewatch. Yes, Debbie. Definitely going to paint this. Yes, I think so. Lots of fun. Especially, I really um, pat myself on the back, too, with the sky. I'm pretty pleased with my sky. Skies are not my jam. Colby Bloom, watch the series I did with her if you haven't. Um, she opened my eyes to skies in the way that Jillian opened my eyes to... Open my eyes to skies. That rhymes. Um, the way that Jillian opened my eyes to um, petals in a different way. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, Jennifer is asking uh, about my Patreon. Friends, if you wanna know more about my Patreon, um, go ahead into the um, description. You're gonna find a link to my Patreon. You can do um, a free seven day trial. And this is a great week to do it. Let me tell you why, because this coming Monday at the time of recording, if you're watching on replay, sorry. Um, but at the time of recording this, uh, February 5th on Monday, we are going live for an hour and we have a special guest. Um, she, uh, is Bindi Desai. Um, if you watched Emma Lefebvre's, uh, painting session with Bryce Dallas Howard, Bryce, um, I mentioned Bindi. Bindi um, gives Bryce lessons and is her teacher. And so um, there's just been a lovely little group of us behind the scenes for the last year or so, uh, maybe a little less, bad memory. And we've just been having a lot of fun, Bindi and Bryce and Emma and, and um, Mint Gardner, Sarah Simon. Um, there's just been such joy in our watercolor community since Bryce entered it. And so, um, it's just been fun. So anyway, I'm bringing over Bindi 
uh, and she has a special project for us. So if you join our free seven day, my free seven day trial, you're going to get access to that live. And I would love to have you. I would love to have you. I would love to have you. Yes. Bryce is in our, Bryce is in our Patreon. Not lately because she's been traveling, um, promoting Argyle. So we miss her. <laughs> I see a question here. How often do you at Christy Rice check your emails? I sent you an encouraging Sarah. Oh my gosh. Yes. So I look at my emails daily um, with everything that recently at the time of recording this went on recently last week or week before. Um, I am still getting through comments in YouTube. Um, I'm pretty sure I have read all the emails that I've received um, in my inbox. And uh, my brand manager, Kristen, she has been um, also getting through to let everybody know Christy read your email and so on and so forth. If you haven't received that email yet, um, Kristen also was behind because she was down with um, the big C word for a week. So we are just getting ourselves back together. But I, I the the, the, the folks that have reached out are just, just blowing my mind and the support has been incredible. So thank you. Thank you so much, really. Yes, we love Bindi. She's an incredible teacher. I had Bindi on the channel here. Um, she painted with me. Um, I think did we go live or was it a recording? I can't remember, but it's um you can you can look it up. Oh, Art with Diamonds sent me a new email this morning. I'll have to take a look. I did not see that one yet. Did not see what that one yet. Okay. Anywho. All right. Thanks so much, friends. This is great. All right. I'm gonna just put the spotlight here. On this one, right the moment. All right. So you might be wondering, like, okay, Chrissy, well, how would you correct this? And I'm feeling okay. It's definitely damp, but that actually is a little bit better. Usually when I do things like this where I've already put a bunch of layers on something and the effect that I'm trying to get just plain and simple is not flipping happening. That is not the color I wanted. I always say to myself, Christy, go bold. Go all in go bold. And let's see. Now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be honest and say it. Usually when I take this approach, it works out. This will be the time it doesn't, but usually it does. So I'm mixing up. I want to go thick. I want to go syrupy. This is, this is a kind of a, a question of water control. So a lot more paint, a lot less water. I don't want to go that bright in color because it's going to mess with it looking like it's in the distance. So we're going to go somewhere in here and I'm going to probably double load. I'm going to scoop this up. I'm going to get some blue on there. All right, friends, going to get scary here. All right. All right. Holding our breath. Not convinced yet. I love pressing hard with these, fill in all the nooks and crannies. Love it, love the white. Stroking up from the real juicy color. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm okay with this. Stroke up and then I kind of wipe off the crayon, stroke up again through that juicy color with the white. Some interesting things are happening. It's still damp. I'm bringing in a little high flow acrylic. And I'm getting out because right now I like where I'm at. I like some of the things that are happening. So I'm gonna get out, I'm gonna do one more thing just to add a little visual sparkle, not actual sparkle. A little sparkle here. Yep, I'm getting out. Go bold. Go bold. Don't feel guilty because your painting went from watercolor to mixed media. Don't feel bad because you had to bring out, you know, a, a super, you know, acrylic, which is opaque. And, you know, watercolor is supposed to be sheer. No. Do what you need to do to love your own artwork. Do what you need to do 
to love your own artwork. Here's what I use. It's golden titanium white. I, it's like a, it doesn't say high flow, but it's, it's a high flow. All right. Do what you need to do to love your own artwork. And with that, friends, I'm going to peace out because I, there's nothing more I can say. Do what you need to do to love your own artwork.